Welcome to the Garage Network Podcast. Join us and the occasional special guest as we discuss everything automotive, from fixing cars as a technician, owning an automotive workshop or business, overall work-life balance, and even the occasional laugh. In this episode of TGN Talks, we were joined by Tiffany from the AAAA. We discussed her career path to the automotive aftermarket industry and also had an opportunity to find out some exciting things that are on the horizon. We hope that you guys enjoy it. So we are joined by Tiffany uh, from the AAAA, Tiffany Conway from the AAAA, um, and really excited for this podcast because I want to get a little bit of an insight, Tiff, as to your journey in the industry. Um, love to talk about how you became part of the AAAA, which mm-hmm. is the Australian Automotive Aftermarket Association. Am I right in, in saying that? Um, <laughs> that's a bit of a tongue twister. Um, five out of five then- for that one. Good, good, good. Five gold stars. And um, <laughs> essentially what what you guys do and who you support in the industry. So um, without further ado, Tiff, I'd, uh, I'd love to hear your, your backstory. Um, mm. how, did you, how did you get involved in the industry in the first place? So, so my background is in marketing. So my role at the AAAA is Director of Membership Marketing and Events. And I started in marketing about 20 odd years ago. And my first job in marketing was at the RACV. So for some reason started in cars and I loved it straight away. And part of the reason why I loved it straight away is because it is a membership organization. So just, that, just for the, yeah. uh, just for <clears throat> Jeff, who's an Englishman, but he might not know who the RACV is. Can you give ah. us a. Uh, I think I might have an idea. Do you? Okay. Do you, do you know who the NRMA is? Yeah. So in the back in the UK, we had the RAC. Right. Yeah. Well, that's it. So it's the yeah, that. So uh, that's myth busted. <laughs> Podcast over. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and here we have another five out of five for question two. <laughs> so, so the RACV is a Victorian chapter of the Royal, Royal Automobile Club and the Victorian version of the NRMA. So uh, so first job was in the RACV. So that gave me, which is quite a large organisation for one that is that has a single state focus and remit, and that gave me incredible exposure to all things marketing, strategy, communications, advertising, campaigns. And then from there, and of course the RACV does insurance, home and contents insurance. And from there, I took up a marketing management role at a company called the Guild Group. And the Guild Group is owned by the Pharmacy Guild of Australia. So that's my first foray into association land. <clears throat> and after about 13 years with the Guild Group, we'd gone from providing insurance so business insurance professional indemnity insurance risk management advice superannuation financial services products to four professional and industry associations to about 30. so in terms of getting a feel for and really what kept me going there and it's exactly what we experience at the double a double a and and in the automotive aftermarket is that shared purpose and is that shared purpose that is about protecting and enhancing the reputation of the industry, the standing of the industry, um, and the sustainability of the industry. So as uh, we were a service provider to those professional associations, but what we were really heavily exposed to and very much involved in was identifying the risks in the industry identifying the areas that perhaps needed improvement and particularly like when you're talking about like dentists, chiropractors, where, you know, some of their practices are fairly heavily and publicly criticised. And so we'd have lawyers who would get involved and make assessments and, and we'd come up with all sorts of case studies about, you know, what's the best way to practice. And you're talking and- like the the chiropractors that put something around your neck uh, that you see on YouTube and just yank it, yes, like those guys, like <laughs> yes, you know, Doctor Backcracker or whatever, in you know, yeah, yeah. So, 
you know, and you'll have your customer groups who go, that's my bag and I want to do that and I have a right to choose the, 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 the type of practice that, that I believe in. And I see the similarities in the AAA and with the automotive aftermarket, you kind of go bodies and cars. They're, they're very different, but it, it mm. still comes down to what's at the centre of all of it is customers and customer choice and customer preferences and very importantly, customer relationships with their service provider. And I look at mechanics and technicians and I go, they are equally as professional and equally as respected as those guys and girls who have been to university for five years and have the shingle out the front of their business that says, I'm very important because I'm a healthcare professional, you know? So <clears throat> that's really what we're trying to do in the, at the AAA is really promote, protect the sustainability of the industry. There's a whole lot of different ways to do that. Really what makes us different and if you like the jewel in our crown is our competency around government relations and advocacy and the motor vehicle um, information scheme is a perfect example of that you know 10-year campaign been implemented through ASRA still very challenging but that is a means for workshops to be true alternatives to dealers yeah and yeah. For, and it's a means for workshops to fulfill what their customers' needs are and fulfill their customers' preferences and be able to service and look after their customers the way that they want to. Yeah, I think I think that's super important. I think um I think you sort of hit the nail on the head a little bit with um giving us the opportunity to be a deal or alternative in every yeah. in every sense of the the word. So mm. ordinarily, you know, if if you have a, a workshop and you had painted floors and walls, you know, you'd sort of consider yourself a dealer alternative, but there'd definitely be um, tasks that you couldn't complete. Right, yes. But now now with uh, with what you're doing with the AAA, it's, mm. it's really pushed us into an area where we can sort of do those repairs that dealers are now doing, um, and it makes us really a dealer alternative in, in every sense of the word. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other... The other thing that I, I think the AAA does really well is our events. So our ability to bring the industry together, and you guys are incredibly good at this as well. I was going to say, yes, please uh, don't play us down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our network is uh, really good at industry <laughs> events too. Yeah. yeah, you guys are really good. So it, it, it's bringing the industry together, not just in one location, to showcase what the industry is doing and whether that's through product development and service delivery, but to also bring the industry together to share ideas and support each other. And whether you do that on the trade show floor or whether you do that at drinks at 11 o'clock at night, it's all valuable. And, and it, it makes it makes the industry, and we talked about this in um, Stuart's column in the magazine, the level of cohesion in the industry at the moment, beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. You know, that there's this, I think a lot of people came out of COVID and went, right, let me add it. I've been sitting down, I've got my house in order, and now it's time to grow. Now it's time to do those things that I've had on the to-do list for too long. Well, I think as an, as an industry, we actually fared relatively well, I think, through the... Um, <laughs> Through the whole, yeah. the whole COVID sort of scenario, um, but yeah, look, I, I definitely think we pulled out of it pretty well, and uh, everyone seems to be working very well together. Is what I've noticed as well. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. so that's actually a very, very positive sort of uh, aspect. Yeah. No, that's yeah. that's good. I mean, it's it's really interesting to hear what your what you guys have got going on um, mm. with the double AA because there's so many. I suppose there's so so much depth to what you actually do. Um, mm. So it's not just that you're sort of fighting uh, for us in with independence uh, for our rights, but there's there's many other things that you sort of conduct as well off the back mm. of this thing. Mm. 
So, you know, I think another driver of the cohesion in the industry and, and how a lot of businesses are working together at the moment is because of what's evolving. So I think um, the you know, the EV evolution and, and our role in, um, I guess, positioning the industry to be EV ready um, and whatever rate of take up of that is comfortable for different businesses is all good. But our role is to go, here's a bit of a roadmap. And our role is to uh, have a seat at the table with all the the government conversations and, um, you know, regulation-based conversations and education too, conversations about EVs. Um, so when there's uncertainty, I think a lot of businesses now are sharing information and sharing thoughts to support each other through that process. Um, the other thing is things like ADAS. So the prevalence of sensors on, on cars now. So from ADAS, not every workshop can have ADAS equipment and do ADAS calibration. So, and so you've got to partner with each other. You've got to find someone in your network who, who you can give to work to, whether it's ADAS or whether it's, you know, a kind of vehicle. I and mean, that's the other thing is the diversity in the car park now. Yeah, how, yeah. Look how like, many how many workshops could do every vehicle? You can't. Impossible. No, I think I think it doesn't, you've got it, to go for it, it doesn't have to be an unpaid thing either. You know, it, it, if these workshops can help each other, you know, it doesn't have to be for free. If you can get paid, but work yeah. together, and um, you know, ultimately it's about the customer. You know, Joe blogs. Uh, exactly. on the street driving the car, and we want to keep them happy. We, 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 there's a lot of talk about how do we um raise the pro the profile of the industry well it's by keeping those customers happy it's not by what mm. how much we've got in the bank or how many fancy tools we've got yeah um yeah. We, we i do have to... a lot of fancy tools though oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 but look i think i think you're right jeff mate like you've that there's there's horses for courses and there's certain cars that i'm not going to be able to repair and there's certain cars that you might be able to repair or you might be more skilled in. And I think it's important yeah. that together as a collective, we identify what they are and who mm. we can refer to. Mm. Mm. Like you said, Jeff, it's, it's about, at the end of the day, it's about bringing the best outcome for the customer. Yeah. Um, and if and if we can get the best outcome from the customer and, and it might not necessarily be at our workshop, then I can cross-refer mm. um, or sublet, you know? Yeah. You see, I, I'm... I'm one of the things that we see in the car park data is the number of cars per household. And so you may you may have a customer who's got, you know, a Holden, which you're happy to service, but their husband might have the, you know, Hyundai, which you don't service. But you're going to keep her and you may keep their 19-year-old son who's also got a car that you service, but you, you're keeping the whole family in the network and you're keeping the whole family in your business and you don't know when the, when the husband's going to change the car and have a car that's going to end up back in your workshop. Yeah. yeah. Not, to men not to mention the power of word of mouth in the local community. And you see that a lot with uh, with the dealer networkers as well and, and especially in their sales and a lot of their recent... Well, there's a lot of manufacturers that are sort of pushing uh, free servicing for a certain amount of time, you know, with with their vehicle. So you might have lost, you know, like you said, maybe that maybe the husband, uh, but mm. he still serviced the wife's car, uh, and then after a few years, once his capped price or free servicing comes to an end, he decides exactly. that he wants to come back, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. which is really good. So, mm. yeah, look, I think the car park data is something that you guys have which we should leverage as independents a little bit more. Yes. I don't I don't think uh, as independents we look at that information as much as probably what we should. Mm. Um, if you're looking at car park data in so the, the specific data that you guys would produce, what would we be looking at? What sort of data are you producing for the members? You are looking at models. In your post, so you can look at the nature of your car park in a, any postcode. So you put a postcode in, it will come up with the number of vehicles in that postcode. 
the number of um, brands, the number of models within each brand, and how old the cars are by age group brackets. So I think it's like one to five, six to 10 and 10 over. I might be wrong, but it's something like that. Um, and the socio demographics of that postcode as well. So okay. some age-based demographics, the number of people in the household, the average earnings in that area as well. So what you're going to be looking at is you can look at the car park per postcode. So as I said, number and types of vehicles and their age. You can look at the car park you see in your business and ask yourself the question, do I have the number of customers and cars that I should have? Do I want to focus on a particular model and type of car? If I want to do that, then I know I can target my marketing in my local area. So I can target yep. Facebook marketing to that postcode and say Volkswagen servicing, Hyundai servicing, whatever. Pick your model. Um, and I can also use my understanding of the car park in that postcode to order parts and equipment. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So, and, and that's, and that's, uh, so you remember, so if you're a member of the AAA, you can get on the website and you'll log in and you can get that car park information. Correct. You know, I've just got this vision, this, I'm just picturing Stuart Charity with a clipboard. Just <laughs> knocking, knocking on everyone's door, collating this information. <laughs> it's no very, idea. Uh, and he's I not was, here to defend himself, Pete. Come I on, I was man. talking to somebody the other day, and I'm like, <laughs> if you take nothing, just the only thing I want you to take out of that this conversation is, you have a login, use it. Absolutely, there's so it much information. It is so easy. There is so much information. So not only are you going to see your current car park and how you can manage your business and grow your business around that. You're also going to see some leading indicators of what's coming down. So if you're looking at the, you can look at all the cars that are one to five years old, look at the model types and go in four years, I'm going to end up with those in my workshop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. So it's just, just a, a pool of information. I don't think we realize that we have access to, you know, like mm. I, I haven't, mm. I haven't really looked at car park data in depth and I know that I'm a member of, of the AAA and I haven't really yeah, looked at it in depth. depth. I know, I know, <laughs> I know. And I and I haven't looked at it in depth um, and I probably really should. You know, That's I, terrible, I think, Pete. That's oh, terrible. It really Pete. is. Are isn't you it, kidding Pete? yourself? <laughs> 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 no. Jeff, are you a member of Azure? I was going to say you probably <laughs> have to be a member of the AAA. No, but uh, look, yeah, but I'm a... But uh, look, I, I am a member of uh, ASWA, you know, which is uh, thank you to the AAA. So uh, you know, I Yay. do see, I do see what you guys do, and um, you know, I think we all appreciate it. But um, you know, if if we're looking at if we're looking at car park data and we're seeing you know cars one to five years old, we do need to make sure our workshops are ready to be. If we've potentially able to be. Um, a deal alternative we we need mm. to we do need to step up a, you know a little bit in the independent game as well mm. um you know the days of two inches thick of oil pete so i'm that sure at one point that you've worked in a workshop mm. like that we do need to get a bit bit smarter and um yeah do do you know be better mate i think you're right look we, I, I think we've probably all worked in shops like that at, at one point in our lives but that was i mean we're talking maybe through my apprenticeship years and and maybe a few years after that. Uh, but I definitely think, like, you're, you're right, Jeff, we, we want to be players in the game, yeah. um, especially at a dealer alternative level. We've yeah. got to pre present like uh, we're a dealer alternative, especially if we want to capture that market where mm -hmm. if we're looking at car park data and we're saying, okay, well, the car's from zero to five years old is this. Mm -hmm. How am I going to be able to get, A, get them in the door, B make them see that I'm a player and I can I can actually service yeah. service their vehicle. But can you can you do an online service stamp? You know all these little bits of information. Yeah. You know it's yeah. we need to do more of this. I, I know some workshops that that have the bright lights and the fan. You know the nice clothes, uh, clean floors, but they yeah. still 
can't update your online service history. We need to, we need, and we should, we should probably promote this a bit more on the garage network as well. You know, what can we do to, to, mm. to help, help, help us step up? Because we need to. Look, you, you know, whenever, if and whenever you'd like a demonstration of car park data and a walkthrough of any of the other research, more than happy to do that for you and your members. Easy. Awesome. I reckon that I reckon that could be a, a nice little webinar that we could do for the, yeah. for the thing. I think that's great. But we, yeah, you're you're very right, Tiff. Like we don't we definitely don't use that information probably nowhere near as much as what we should. Um, and I think it's important that maybe, like you said, if if you want to be a dealer alternative and play at that level, then you need to know what's going on with your marketing. Yeah, and look, I, I think it's particularly important for. <clears throat> younger business owners just starting out and, and probably at the earlier end of growing their business is, A, it sets up really good habits in terms of your business management. I think it shows good leadership to your staff to see them using innovative data-led ways of growing your business and understanding your customer base. And it, it arms those, you know, maybe younger, earlier business owners with, data that's going to help them make smart decisions in their business so that they're not losing or wasting resources, yeah. you know. And when interest rates are going up, that's really important. And when you've got to pay more money to find and keep staff, that's really important. Yeah. No, I think I think you're very right. The business... The businesses have to be profitable enough to pay good staff as well to stay. So, yeah. so we're going to make sure that uh, that we're doing everything in our power. And if if car park data is one of them, then uh, then we definitely need to to look into that. Yeah. Oh, um, that's that's good. I mean, that's that's really good information. I think we should definitely get the like a little webinar type thing happening, yeah. especially for the car park data. But I'm actually more interested in what you guys are doing next year with uh, with the trade show as well because, um, you know, maybe some people don't know, but you or the AAA run probably the largest uh, trade based event uh, in Australia. I would I would say, am I right in saying that? Let's just say that it's yeah, the largest. You are. Trade it's categorically the biggest, the largest, and the best. There you go. There you go. And you're not just saying that you're being biased. <laughs> Is but- it- um, is it be- is it better than SEMA? Oh, in Australia, yes. Oh, I'm sorry, I was trying to throw you under the bus. So. <laughs> I was I was going to share Mr. Brandon Stackler, and um, you know, oh, <laughs> look what Tiffany's saying. Sorry, <laughs> but yeah, look, I think uh, I think what you guys are doing um, in that space as well is is really important, and you guys are running, like I said, the, the largest um, trade based event, uh, and you run it annually uh, one in melbourne one in brisbane um so they're slightly the different they're slightly different so so expo yep um is every second year and then in between our expos we run auto care so i think a number of us went to auto care in brisbane in june it's a smaller event education based education led and yeah we were lucky enough to have brandon steckler there and it was a uh, fantastic couple of days. Um, what we saw at Auto Care was a shift in uh, the demographic of attendees at Auto Care uh, in that they were younger. We had a younger audience there. And the attraction was definitely the training and the sessions that Brandon and a few other trainers ran. So the technical training was so well received. So the feedback we got was super positive and the engagement in that two days was so high. Um, so yeah, kind of came off auto care buzzing. It is a, a smaller, um, event. So at auto care, you're going to have two, two and a half thousand attendees at Expo. It's 10,000 attendees. Okay. So, right. And we take up, I think it's 12, 13 bays at the convention exhibition center in Melbourne. Goes over three days and. Yes, we've been fortunate enough to work with Jeff and Costa on securing um, Diagnose Dan and Sean. Tippett. Let's fix it together. That's uh, Diagnose Dan's um, <laughs> tagline. Let's fix this together. Yeah, uh, and uh, Sean Tipping just uh, he's just an absolute legend. Yeah, yeah. yeah thank you. Yeah, for, so... Thank you for uh, allowing us to help with that. But um, no, thank you. We're, so we're excited. 
So, Jeff, why why are you excited? What do you think um, Dan and Sean are going to really bring to the event? So, um, I, I think something a bit different. So, Dan's from um, he's from the the Netherlands, like Amsterdam. I've never been, uh, um, uh, but but I've seen some of his YouTube videos. Sometimes when I've had a strange car, you know, don't tell anybody. But I might have had a look, little look on YouTube and. And Dan's had some really good information now, and and I've used his. Um, Dan also has a uh, like a technical service bulletin uh, uh, program, you know, like software, and and that's real. That's been really um, interesting as well, and and really helpful. So uh, he works on a lot of European cars, which is what we're seeing, and probably what we I'm not going to say struggle to fix, but they're the, they're the cars that you know we we need to know more about, and and Dan's going to have a, a wealth of knowledge and information on that. Mm. And and Sean Tipping, uh, Sean Tipping, uh, I've been listening to his podcast now for quite a while, and and you know we we get on and we have a chit chat every now and then. He's a, a mobile uh, sort of auto electrician and programmer. And he's just going out, you know, he's in uh, Minnesota, so it's either snowing or a zillion degrees, with, but with no kangaroos. Mm. And, um, uh, you know, he's dealing with independent workshops. So he, so he's he's got, you know, I'm not saying Dan doesn't, but he, he wakes up in the morning, gets in a van and goes fixing problems, programs, modules, uh, you know, does some key work as well. So he's just going to give a really good, um, a, a good look to, what we what we've recently just got with the right to repair. Mm. So um yeah. I, I, and um I, I think that everyone everyone watches Dan, uh, uh diagnosed Dan and uh, and uh, you know a lot of people listen to Sean on the podcast and yeah. I think uh, uh so I had somebody message me a few months ago and he said please tell me uh, please tell me Sean Tippin's coming to Australia and I was like well, I can't, uh, you know, I can't, I can't say any, I don't know, you know, uh, but uh, no, it, it, and it'll be, it'll be uh, both of their first times in Australia as well. So uh, mm. I'm sure they'll get a warm Australian welcome with lots of beer and good food. For sure. For sure. And, and the double A, double A, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so Tiff, what, what does the uh, agenda hold at, uh, at Expo then? for us so for anyone that's sort of listening to the podcast they might sort of yeah. be thinking to themselves okay well what would i expect if i was to go so you'd walk into the convention center you get your little name tag you're going to walk in you're going to see a huge exhibition space full of over 400 exhibitors in covering australia's biggest brands in the automotive aftermarket and in collision repair we will also have, my dog's just walked into the room, we will also have, um, and this is very cool, so anyone who came in 2022 may have popped in to see the workshop of the future. And at that point, and this is an indication of how quickly technology in this industry is moving along, at that point the workshop of the future covered some EV, it covered some ADAS, and it covered kind of workshop management systems. For 2024, we will have a whole area dedicated to ADAS, ADAS training, demonstration of ADAS equipment, um, training on ADAS calibration, and so kind of education. So an education in terms of uh, the content that will be available in that area. We're calling it the ADAS Technology Zone. Um, and also in the, the training curriculum. So really fortunate to be working with ADAS Solutions um, on that space. Um, so, yeah, all things ADAS covered and particularly, uh, if you like, the, the issues or complexities around ADAS calibration in collision repair. Um, and then a little bit further on, what was the workshop of the future will be Expo Electrified. And then Expo Electrified, again, really fortunate to be working with the guys from the TAT EV and Hybrid Network, and they will be delivering hands-on training demonstrations on um, EV service or repair, I should say, on different components of a car. Do not ask me what those components are. But Jeff <laughs> will have that totally under control. Uh, we'll also have 
um, uh, probably we're also very fortunate. So at the AAAA and in the Auto Innovation Centre. A little while ago, we secured a, um, a government funding um, to uh, get a couple of EVs and EV equipment so that we can do training and help the industry with product development related to EVs. So we'll have one of those EVs on the stand um, and it's quite a rare EV. Um, so we'll be able to, on the stand, anyone who comes into that area will be able to see awesome EV, EV related equipment, um, PPE, maybe some charging um, and the training. And <clears throat> then further along, we'll also have, um, and I'm working really closely with you guys, uh, friends with um, Gavin Cripp from Kangan. Yeah. And the guys from the Vic Auto Forum on doing an activation for our students and apprentices. Um, one of the things we've been talking about for a little while is our events showcase the industry at its best and, you know, showcase the latest equipment and technology. And so that is the perfect forum for any student or apprentice to really immerse themselves in the industry and what we do and the people that it's made up of. So we'll be doing that as well. Uh, we'll have the gala dinner. And of course, so the awards program is about to roll out. So you've got a breakfast on the Thursday morning, the gala dinner on the Thursday night. I know you'll both have really good dresses for that. The Friday we have the <laughs> <Yeah>. networking <laughs> drinks. <laughs> and the networking <laughs> drinks will be on the trade show floor. So that's one of the things we, we saw at Auto Care was keep the people around our stands, around our suppliers our suppliers and exhibitors. And, yeah, the buzz in the room was pretty cool. So, yeah, so that's it. And we've also got um, a couple of international trainers for the collision repair side of things too. So Lovely. it's I'm it's pumping already. It's The three days is going to go very quickly. I think there's there's plenty on the go. I, I'm yeah. definitely definitely excited about the um, the trainers that are coming from overseas, especially for the technical training. Mm. Um, I'm, obviously, I'm light vehicle mechanics. I'm not collision repair, but uh, definitely looking forward to to the two internationals that are coming through. So I think we'll learn definitely learn a lot from them as we did last oh. year. But I think you guys have got plenty on the go, and uh, it sounds like if if someone's thinking of going, it's definitely a, a worthwhile exercise. And I really like the way that you're trying to sort of tie it in with making sure that the younger generation appreciate mm. what's happening within the industry and see a future for them in the industry. Exactly. About exactly. changing their mindset a little bit because we sort of uh, have been tarred with a little bit of a a bad brush where oily rag, you know, oily <laughs> rag. Right. Yeah, you know, where, where some some sort of younger guys don't see it as a career pathways because, um, it, you know, it's it's got that stigma around it where you know I, I come home I'm dirty I'm tired I'm oily. Uh, it's definitely not the case any any longer, and there's there's a massive evolution and a massive shift mm. with the industry. So I think it's important that you guys are are really showcasing to the younger guys that. Yeah. Yes, there there is a career here, and there is a career pathways within this industry. You know, yeah. uh, uh, across multiple facets. You know, mm. I want we, them we going. This... I want them going home to their parents, yeah. uh, and for their parents to come along if they if they want to. But the word needs to to get around. So w when I joined the AAA and I thought about my daughter. Right, I've got two girls, nineteen and seventeen. And my uh, Amelia, my 19 year old, you know, like I think she was 16 at the time. And, and she's got a mind for problem solving and she's got a really good bullshit detector. And so that's all right. Know, Jeff's a real good bullshit artist. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sounds like Found a out straight away. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, why wouldn't she get into this? Yes. Why wouldn't she go into, you know, um, auto engineering or, or become a technician or because the technology, the rate of the increasing in technology, the advancements in technology in this industry is making it very attractive to a younger audience. But are we talking to the right people? I think we need to be talking to the kids 
who think they need to be doing engineering or the kids who like gaming or the kids yeah. who like programming. And they're not just boys, they're boys and girls. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely, absolutely right. Yeah. I definitely agree with that. I, I think I think that's I think that's something that's um, attracted a couple of the young guys that so we we employ two young apprentices now and they're quite uh, driven by that side of the industry where they they say, okay, well, I can, I can get to code something or program something mm. uh, into a car, and they they quite like that aspect of it. Um, I, I think that's the way, like you said, we need to sort of be appealing to an audience that might pick that up, you know, and and run with it because it's yeah. definitely the way that the industry is going, especially with the the way technology is in these cars, you know. Mm. So I mean, I've, I've got some some guys that, like you said, Jeff, uh, about the online digital um log books you know some some of my guys struggle with the, the digital log books and the some others typically the the gamers or the more tech savvy ones are just onto yeah. it straight away you know yeah yeah it's easy for them yeah, yeah definitely we, we just just need to um uh, practice you know we weren't the best at everything when we first started you've got to practice and and get that's better right. you know yeah but um just going back to uh you mentioned gavin crib before and uh, i absolutely love gavin crib and yeah uh, we, we had a podcast with uh and i'll give you a little snippet but the podcast hasn't been released yet but um okay. you know what we can what can we do to to bring you know young blood into the industry and, and i really think it'd be a great idea if, if we could get you know i'm not going to say rivals but you know can we get burst and snap on you know all these different companies that are involved in the industry you know let's mm -hmm. get tat let's get the double a double a and all band together and you, you know uh, how how do we how do we uh attack in in a nice way how Ooh. do we do we how do we get the um how do we get to them and you know i i, I heard a story and i think it was you pete you called your old school saying that you were if you had any really good sort of pupils or pupils that were about to leave school that would like to be in the automotive industry and they uh they were yeah nah did nah sorry we, we we won't do that you know we're all words to that effect it was you wasn't it Pete? yeah so yeah mm. uh uh yeah uh, i was i was met i was met with some oh you're going a little bit uh a little bit underwater there jeff but yes i um I was met with a little bit of resistance from the careers advisor, actually. So um, we sort of we sort of approached the careers advisor um, and said, "Look, we're look, we're looking to employ an apprentice." And he said, "Look, we're not really." And this is a while ago now. Their, their views may have changed a little bit since, but he sort of said to me, "Look, we're sort of pushing our kids not to." You know, to to trial, try something else, and maybe sort of academic and and into into um, you know professions. And I I said, well, it's funny you say that because the the trade uh, has. So my father's a mechanic. I said and that trade yeah. pu pushed three kids through this uh, private schooling education. So right, you know how dare you? But um, yeah, look, I don't know whether their views have changed any since. Uh, and this was a while ago now. But yes, that's that's the that's what we got met with uh, then. So I think, look, I think some of the schools now are doing some really good things. Like most recently in the last month, we've had three work experience kids come through, right. and and that's all from. So we've got one workshop in in Balmain and the other one in uh, in the Sutherland Shire. And so the Balmain, I think it's Balmain Elementary School, quite possibly, and they've pushed two kids through our doors recently. Um, mm. and one from the Shire as well. So so it is starting to become a little bit more popular as a as a trade choice now, you know. Mm. So mm. I think I think hopefully with any luck we can start seeing that come through mm. uh, sooner rather than later. But what you've done there, which we would encourage many more workshops to do, is to show that initiative and connect with your local community, whether it's through your school as an employer or whether it's through your school as a parent. So that local networking and find the kids who might be a bit tech savvy, find the kids who love cars. Um, and then also looking, so we're talking about kids coming through school, but perhaps, you know, something else to reflect on. And I know you've got a guy in, in your business, Pete, who is an example of this as well. And that is 
someone from another industry with a transferable skill set, right? So in a way, that's how I've come to the AAA. I didn't come with any automotive aftermarket experience, but I came with a whole lot of professional association and membership events and marketing experience. So when you've got enough kind of skills and experience to contribute to the success of the business and also with the values and the right attitude that you fit and you add value to the business, then the other skill sets can come. And that, you know, you might start a bit slower, but it's categorically worth it in the long run. Uh, but and and I guess the the upside of that as well is that it just broadens your pool of potential employees. Yeah, yeah, mm. I, I agree. Look, we we employ we employ one guy who was uh, in the corporate uh, sector for a while. He's he's come to us as an adult apprentice, right. and he brings something to the table. He brings something to the table that we we don't get very often, you know. And his skill set might develop over time. He's only a first year, but he's very much into cars, and he's very much bringing a different perspective on on how to view things and it's probably a little yeah. bit more corporate but truth be told um you know if, if like if we look at our car park data and i say okay well i want to work on zero to five year old cars maybe the, mm. the more corporate approach might be the approach that i need to get these cars through the door yeah you know yeah. so yeah look i think uh i think hopefully with any luck the perception changes of of how the industry is and uh, we get some more younger guys coming mm. through and I, I think you're right we need to pick up the, the ones that are a bit more tech savvy and maybe a little bit interested in cars and uh mm. and really nurture nurture them because the the existing techs of my age they that there's few and far between now so we're, mm. we're picking from the same pool of technicians so we really need to say yeah. what are you just smirking at jeff i'm not that old what are you talking about <laughs> 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 oh dear, but in my day <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah look ho- hopefully with any luck we can see some some new blood come through but yeah it should be good now tiff mm. just um i suppose before we start wrapping up um yeah. i want to know what does life hold for, for tiff and the double a double a let's let's snapshot five years forward from now and oh where's the God. where's the where's the double a double a what are we doing is there is there any new innovations? Is it something that you guys are working on? Is there a there... secret? Is there a secret that you yeah. get a secret? You can... <laughs> yeah, we you know we'll love a secret. Uh, well, look, I would like to think so. In five years' time, so we started this whole conversation with what is the double A double A? What do we do? How do we add value? And we also went very quickly to, if you're a member of the AAAA, use your login and access the benefits that are already there for you. The the next part of that as well is, if you're not a member of the AAAA, for goodness sake, join. <laughs> you like what we do. If you are one of the probably 25,000 workshops that are benefiting from the work that we do to protect the industry and promote the industry and provide amazing tools, join. If you join the AA right now as a workshop with one to five employees, it's about $300, Wow! right? And that's your membership through to the 30th of June next year. Right, so it's like a cup of coffee a week. And the way I put it is you make one phone call to the legal hotline, you've covered your cost of membership. Yeah, absolutely. You make one good decision based on car park data that could save you freaking thousands of dollars, you've covered the cost of your membership. Yeah. Uh, Apart from that, our success, where do we want to be in five years? In five years, I would love to be sitting here saying, our 10,000 members are absolutely delighted that they have access and can service and repair any car that comes into their workshop. Yeah. All right. So, um, you know, and running events where, we, where we're running out of space at the MCEC and, you know, we're totally out of venues in Australia and we all have to go to SEMA. Now that would be good. So oh, that, that would, like that would be good actually. I think, that, I, like I think that's on the Garage Network's hit list is uh is SEMA for sure. We we were pretty close. It was pretty close, but we we um we were really wanting to do Super Saturday. 
Um, Super Saturday. Yeah, so I think it's oh, like a yeah. Um, at SEMA. Uh, and you, you, who knows? Maybe twenty four could be the year. Who, who, yeah. who knows? Could be the year. Could be the year. But it's look, worth a really, visit. I'm lucky. I'm lucky enough to say I've I've been twice now. Twice, twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 pretty fantastic. It's the the first time was the way I described it was like drinking from a fire hose. It's like sensory overload. Um, but when I went, uh, what was it a month ago? Uh, yeah, really, really interesting to a see what they can do with cars in the US. Um, how they're adapting to and how they're kind of accepting EVs into their marketplace, particularly so many EV conversions because they do love their older cars. Um, so yeah, a lot of work there. But yeah, it's good fun. You got to do it. Nice. That's on the on the hit list. A hundred percent. I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think we might revisit next year, Jeff. And the double A double A run a cracking member night. Do they? Well, I'm going to yeah, join. I, I am going to. Do you know what? I, I, I did. I thought. I, I thought I was a member, but um. Anyway, I will join. Yes. And, um. Because that way I can go to the cracking members night. At uh, yeah. 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 Perfect. Oh. Good. Well, look, Tiff. Um. I think uh, I think we've sort of covered everything we need to, and I really appreciated uh, hearing about your journey, uh, the journey of the AAA, and what we expect to see in the in the future from it, especially with the uh, the up and coming events. So, definitely, uh, thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thank, thank you, you, Peter. Thank you, Jeff. You guys are amazing. You're doing amazing, uh, amazing work for the industry, and we we love working with you. Thank you so likewise. much. We appreciate that. And likewise, yeah. yeah. And we'll uh, we'll chat to you very, very soon. Thank you. All right. Have a good night, guys. Take care. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Don't forget to join our private Facebook page if you are an automotive technician and also subscribe to our YouTube and our podcast channel. They are all called The Garage Network. Thanks, guys, and see you next time.